What is up everybody, it is Ov here, here is my draw my life for 100,000 subs, I want to say a massive thank you, we're actually currently on 150k subs, and uh, this video was meant to be done a couple of weeks ago when we hit 100k, but we've exploded, I've not had time at all, but this is going to be my draw my life, now before I start, if you're looking for some kind of sad soppy story, which I've watched so many draw my lives, and they're so depressing, uh, I'm very sorry, but also happy to say you're not going to get that with this one, uh, I've had a nice life, I've enjoyed it, and this is more going to be a uh, happy story. Sure, it's had ups and downs, but the majority of it is uh, is pretty happy, which is very odd for YouTubers. I swear all YouTubers seem to have uh, some kind of weird thing. Anyway, this is the UK. This is Great Britain. I was born here, which is a little town called Rutland. Oh, I'm doing this on my phone, by the way, hence why the drawing will be absolutely crap. I cannot draw my phone. A little town called Rutland in Wales. Um, now, I moved from Wales when I was really young as well. I've moved so much around the place. I've lived like it's I've moved a lot, but it's very much in the same area uh, where where I've been where I've living as you can see it's it that's roughly where I've been. I've moved about 13 times in my short 19 years. Um, for a variety of reasons, but mainly I think my family just gets bored of living in one place and we want to move. So speaking of my family, uh, we have got my dad. He is um, he's awesome. He's my dad. I I love my family. My family is literally like um, best friends. I'm very open with my family, so we can talk about stuff. Um, in you know, that some families you'd go and you would never speak to it about your parents. Uh, sometimes it's rude. We we can be quite rude and quite jokey. Um, but you know, it's always been great fun. We've never had real rows, no issues like that. So I haven't got anything like that to report on. They're still happily married. I don't know how long they've been married. I'm gonna say. 30 years, there we go, 30 years, and that's going to be a star around that, <laughs> so bad at drawing, I also have a bigger brother, he's actually, why? Well, he's my bigger brother, uh, but currently, I'm actually about here compared to him, so really, I'm the bigger brother, but he's the older brother, his name's Bob, he is 21 now, and also, we have a con really nice bro relationship, uh, where we are just as fret, well, that's, that looks unhappy. Uh, we are as friendly to each other as I am to any of my mates. It's more of a mate relationship, uh, which I absolutely love, and I wouldn't change for the world. Uh, currently, we are. Um, so I'm 19. He's like 20, 21, I think now, and my parents are about 45 or something. So we're a relatively young family for all our ages, if that makes sense. Uh, so my parents aren't like 60, they're like 45, and um, I'm very close age to my brother, which I think helped. Anyway, let's go back to the start. So we are going to go all the way back to when I lived in... Where did I live? I lived down... I lived in Wiltshire, which is where I, where I still live. Um, actually, I lived there for a good few years, and I went to school. At school, I uh, made loads of friends. I mean, I, I don't know why, but I loved all my friends. At school, uh, we were always, you know, great... I don't mean like make love, that looks maybe a little bit weird. Uh, we were always, you know, good friends. I've always had a close relationship with my friends. And I think the main thing about that is um, that the town that I live in is quite small. Uh, I still live there now, and you know everybody in town. So, I mean, that can be great, and that can also be bad. I went to a, uh, a little school in uh, Devizes, Wiltshire, which is actually where I still live, um, called St... St. Joseph's? I think it's St. Joseph's. Sifts. Yeah, I think it's St. Joseph's. Which was like my first nursery and primary school. Um, I wasn't there for the whole life though, but that's where I met my friends. And that's where I met like friends that kind of, you know, I always think even now as best friends. Even though I don't see them as much, that's always been where my best friends have. And this is kind of actually where I fell into the love of gaming. I've always loved gaming. Uh, and obviously it would come in some time. But St. Joseph's School, I always remember, was when I first found out about video games because we had a ICT room that we, we used to go in. You know, you used to have the gay-ass ICT lessons uh, where they teach you about, like... I mean, we were probably, like, seven years old at this time. So they were trying to teach us, like, uh, PowerPoint and that kind of stuff. And we would all sit in there and play games on the PC. Uh, a game that I used to play on the PC... That's me... Uh, on the PC at school, that, which wasn't blocked, is called On The Run. If you haven't played On The Run, head over to miniclip.com and try On The Run. I probably clocked in, you know, days of this at school. I don't know why. It was so much fun. I also used to play little games like Slime Football. 
Uh, all the slime games used to be really good fun as well. And this is what I played when I was young because the teachers, first of all, they would never come and look at your computer. So the teachers are like sat at their desk trying to go ham on freaking PowerPoint or something, trying to like be a boss at it. Uh, while we're all here playing on the run, which is actually a racing game. There we go. There's a, ra there's a car. It's a racing game and... Um, we would kind of all compete, see who could do it the fastest, see who can complete it. And that was really good fun. And I remember after playing that, uh, I actually asked my parents for my first game console, which was awesome. And it still is possibly the best console out there. Kind of looks kind of, kind of looks like that, not entirely. If anyone can guess what this is before I actually finish like putting the final bits in, please do tell me. It is, of course, a Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64 was my first ever games console. Uh, I remember unboxing it and I was just over the moon. It was like possibly the best thing I have ever, ever had. The Nintendo 64 with that awkward but amazing controller that kind of looked like a penis. It kind of looked like, I don't know, it was, it was, something, it was something weird like that. Um, it was literally the best console I ever played. And I clocked in hours and hours of Super Smash Bros. Uh, Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Racing, Diddy Kong Racing, whatever it was, and it was the best thing. But the number one game that got me into video games, got me into shooters, was 007. And it, I believe it was GoldenEye? Was it GoldenEye? Oh, that's really bad. I should know what it is. I think it was GoldenEye. It was 007, and it was like the best game you have ever played. It was the only good uh, James Bond game that actually was like, you know, a shooter. Now, nowadays, we think. Any, fra any game franchise that comes from a film uh, is, is pretty crap, and we, we, we kind of play, um, that's James Bond looking sad now, we kind of play Call of Duty and all that kind of jazz, whereas back then, 007 GoldenEye was the bomb, it was the game to play, I had so much fun playing it, and that kind of brought me over to uh, my next console, now the next console I had actually, this was all while I was in like uh, primary school, wasn't my console, it was really upsetting, it was my brother's, he bought a Xbox original, what it looks like and he didn't get the uh, the normal you get the normal black one he got like a, a clear one and you could see inside it so you could see all the little processes and stuff and it just looked amazing and when he was like he brought it home one day and was just like hey look what I got uh, and I, I was just stood there just like in complete and utter awe and uh, I was actually kind of wait, hang on he was uh, he was like he was very happy at the time. I was kind of annoyed and angry because obviously he had one. I remember we only had one controller. That is apparently a controller. Uh, we only had one controller to start with. And he would go and play Halo and I would only be able to watch. So he's kind of w playing it and I'd have to watch. And I'd be like, dude, I'm so much better. Let me play it. Uh, but he would never really let me. Uh, until a game that I uh, I really enjoyed. Let me get this. Let me get this. This is the Xbox again. Uh, another game that I really enjoyed was Driver. Now, if you haven't played Driver before, it's kind of like an open world racing game. It's kind of like, I guess, a GTA, uh, but it's a more friendly, it's like a 16 instead of an 18, so lots of people play it. Uh, I remember when I bought it, I bought it for the console. I was really young. This was like a 16 rated game, and I was like, I wasn't even like 10 at this age, and I felt so badass playing it. Um, and I had the disc and I wouldn't let my brother play it because it was my game But the problem with it was it was his Xbox So that did not work and I rarely got to play that game once I said he can't play it because he wouldn't let me on his friggin Xbox So that was what happened at my kind of primary school. That's how I got into gaming. We then moved uh, so we were living God, My Great Britain looks awful. We were living down here in Wiltshire. We then moved uh, up to here, which is like near Swansea. I think it's called Carmarthenshire. I can't quite remember. Uh, and I moved into a new school. It was a Welsh-speaking school. I can't remember the name of it. Um, it was like Kiriog or I don't know. It was some weird name. Uh, but it was a Welsh-speaking school and all they spoke was Welsh there. Uh, and although I'm not amazing at Welsh, I learned a little bit but not really much and it was awful. So we got out of that school very, very fast and we moved over here to a school called Narbeth. Narbeth. There we go, Narbeth. Uh, and this was where I was going to finish out uh, pretty much all of my primary school, so up to year six. I think I actually went up to year five in Narbeth. Now, in Wales, um, I don't really have many stories from Wales. It was kind of, uh, it was a fun time. Uh, the whole family moved over there because Wales was cheap. I mean, we had a really, like a really nice house. 
you know, a brand new house and everything, and it cost like, it was only like 250k, which for that kind of house was like, what? It was amazing. Um, and I, I loved it, but it was probably because I was small, I kind of remember the house being huge. So that was, the, that was our reason to move out to Wales, but we didn't last too long in Wales, we lasted like a couple of years. Uh, but one thing I remember is when I moved to Wales, which we lived three houses in Wales, we moved to a, to a place called Hebron, uh, which is a very small, very small village. And um, when we were unpacking, something disastrous happened to Ov. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you guys can vouch for this. So I unpacked, first thing I unpacked was my PS2, because at that time I had a, a PlayStation 2. Um, and I, I got all my, you know, I got all my games. These are games. I got all my games out, and I was missing something. Now, if you probably didn't play stuff like PS2, or even the start of the 360, you won't remember these things. Dun 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 dun. Kind of, look, kind of looks like that, and they said on them, like, I don't know if it was 24 meg, but it was that. It was a memory card. The memory card was the worst thing ever. And in this move to Hebron, I lost my memory card. And you won't believe how well I was doing on Crash Bandicoot at the time. I was doing so friggin' well. And this, this, disappeared. No idea where it went. I still have no idea where it went. And I cried for literally the whole moving in day. Like, where is my memory card? I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and, you know, we lived in that house for a year. And I still had never found it. Obviously, I'd, I kind of given up by by the end of the year. And then we moved out at the end of that year, and we were moving place. Now, obviously, in a car, right? In a car, you have you have your seats like like this. Uh, so they're like seats like that. There's the middle seat, and we had a little pull down thing here, which you pull down, and there was like a cup holder and a little space. And on our move out from that house. What did I find in the cup holder? Literally, I looked in this little, it was this little cup holder, uh, like that, kind of in, in this big armrest kind of thing. Wow, that's a bad drawing. And in here was a small memory card, a 24 megabytes, and it was literally the happiest day of the world. I mean, in this time, I'd completed Crash Bandicoot again, but I'd left my memory card in that cup holder for a year. It caused so much control C and so much awfulness, uh, but luckily, we found it. Anyway, after our move from Hebron, we're kind of going all over the place here. So again, we're going to do a little UK down here. So we moved uh, from Hebron back down to Wiltshire to a town called Trowbridge. Trowbridge. Uh, which is where I went to school and we lived. And to be honest, I don't like Trowbridge. It's like so... It's, it's fine, but it's quite shabby and it's not very nice at all. So I went to two schools there. I went to a school called St. John's, uh, which is where I finished... Uh, I finished primary school and I got top marks so all of my lessons everything I got top marks so that was absolutely brilliant and then why did that just move and then we went to a school after that called St. Augustine's uh, which we had to wear hideous purple blazers for it was a Catholic school very strict and I absolutely hated it but there's more news on that to come so when I moved back home uh, to Wiltshire, it was a lot nicer living in the UK, uh, sorry, living in England just felt a lot nicer because there wasn't a slight, even though the Welsh isn't really a language barrage at all because nobody speaks Welsh it was just nice to live at home and when I was here um, this is kind of when the Xbox 360 came out, so keeping it gaming related, Xbox 360 came out um, but also a kind of bad part of my life occurred, this is, this is going to be like probably the one kind of bad little section of, of my life um, I was outside playing football, so we were out, I don't know how to draw this, we were out playing football on the street, as you do, as you do as kids, you know, all the kids are playing football on the street, and you have, uh, you have curbs, obviously, where, where the pavement is, now, I was playing football, I tripped, and I fell, and I fell, and I hit my pelvis, like that, that's like my pelvis, I hit my pelvis on the curb, like that. And it was the most horrible experience I have ever had. I even to this day I have a twisted pelvis, uh, so my pelvis is slightly out. You know, it's like a technically I could be classed as disabled. I could get one of those disabled badges to park wherever I want for free, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, but I could claim for that. And I, you know, if I was on benefits, I could claim disabled disa dis disability benefits. But personally, I don't think I'm disabled. I think I'm absolutely fine. But 
uh, I hit my back, and for about two weeks, I think it was about two weeks, at least I remember for about two weeks, I couldn't walk at all. Uh, I had to go in one of those massive MRI chambers where they where they kind of sit you in it and you kind of get... It's really weird. You're, you're on a bed. I don't know if you've ever seen them before. You're on a bed and you get taken in to this huge tunnel. And they basically scan your whole body. And uh, I was concussed, you know, for a few days. I couldn't walk. I had to have a walking stick. Um, but nothing, nothing broke. Nothing cracked. I just twisted my pelvis out. Um, and I had to go to therapy for, you know, a couple of months, a few months. I had to get a massage, which was just so nice. Like, having the massage each each week was really cool. Uh, but I was given, like, exercises to get my back back into shape. Um, and that worked out absolutely fine until uh, probably probably about four months later, we have uh, we had a bath. We lived in a... Re I really enjoyed... I, this is my favorite house. We moved into a house called... Matt and Locke in Divisors, uh, and it was just the best house ever. And we had a, ha a bath like this. And when you got out of the bath, you then stepped onto a floor like this, and then there was another step on here. And this was like a this was a marble bit here, uh, so it was a really hard rock. I got out, I slipped, and yet again I hit my back, exact same spot on this step. Um, and I walked out onto the landing, and I vomited everywhere. Literally, it was the most you've ever seen. And again, I was out for action for another three weeks. Uh, which was horrible, but hey, that was like the only bad thing. I've never broken a bone touch wood, really, or anything like that. So that was probably the worst time I've had in my life. Uh, but after that, I had a little bit of trouble at school. What am I drawing? Let's delete that. I had a little trouble at school. I'm not going to get into it, uh, but I was going to St. Gaston's at the time. Uh, I was a little bit of a naughty boy, and I was expelled from this school. I don't know what I'm trying to show. I, I don't know. That's, that looks like a gun. That was meant to be a hand. Uh, that's my head teacher pointing me to the door. Uh, so I, I was expelled. I don't know why I'm pointing back at him. <laughs> why am I pointing back? No, you go to the door. Um, and I, I got I got expelled. So I, I got taken out of that school, um, which was you know my own fault, but I wouldn't change anything for the world. And I'm unbelievably happy because from that expulsion came the start of the rest of my life. The start of uh, the, my, my most amazing part of my life. So I was home tutored then for a couple of months. So my mom, uh, you know, home tutored me. We were in a, we were in a nice financial situation where my mom uh, didn't really have to work much. Uh, you know, she was at home with me, and I was being taught by her, which was really really cool because we had film we had <laughs> we had film lessons where we'd watch a film. Uh, when we when it was like PE time, we'd go and just play football or badminton in the garden, and you know, go swimming and stuff. And it was really, really nice. But obviously, I the education side uh, wasn't wasn't the best because I was at home. Break times, I could just go and play on my Xbox. At that time as well, Saints Row One had just come out, so I was addicted. And um, you know, it was really, really nice. But I had to go to a I had to go to another school, and not many schools around my area would take me. Uh, except for one school which changed my life forever. So that school is called Dauncey's. Uh, Dauncey School in West Lavington. Now this was um, what everybody else called a posh school. It was a private school um, and I was very surprised that they took me. It had like, you know, some of the, the like, it was in the top like 15 schools in the country or something. It was like a really, really good school and I was nervous about going because I know the people that went there. I mean, my family had a bit of money, but we weren't we weren't rich. We were just you know just happy. And I know these people at this school were loaded. You know they had they had a lot of money. There was a lot of foreigners because it was a boarding school. So I was like, oh, there's gonna be some really snobby pricks here. But luckily uh, there wasn't. And from this, I made some really really good friends, and uh, it it gave me some really nice opportunities uh, to kind of work, to learn, and to really build myself as I am. Uh, it built my confidence, it built my work rate, it built my work ethic, etc. And it made me such a good person. It changed me from... No, I wasn't a bad person. Uh, but I mean, it just made me very well-rounded, uh, which I really do thank them for. Um, but I was always a little bit of, of the cheeky chap at school. I mean, you know, it was detentions once a week. It was lost property detentions as well every other day, etc, uh, etc. Et but it was fun. It was school. I had to have fun. You know, I was still working. I was still getting my grades. But this is where I met uh, a bunch of friends that we, we played a lot of video games. So in our break times, we went into our, because we had like rooms for each house, uh, and we would play Xbox. 
Uh, this was zombies. <laughs> this was this was we would all play uh, zombies on this Xbox in front of literally like you know there there were loads of us here because it was a school so there was loads of kids uh, watching us play zombies and you know we take it in turn uh, and also Mario Kart Wii uh, just came out so. That was a really good thing, and our house mistress had just no wait wait our old house mistress had just bought us a Nintendo Wii, uh, so we were, we played on that quite a lot. So you know that video games just came a part of everyday life. Um, I always said from a young age, from probably this age actually, that I wanted to work in the video game industry, and everyone not laughed at me, but you, you know my parents would be like, no, you're never going to get that job. Stop playing video games, etc. The normal kind of parent banter, I guess you would say, uh, ultimate banter from the parents. How funny how that's changed, but you know it was it was just a thing where we play and we play. We'd go home. Modern Warfare 2 was out, so everybody was raving on that Call of Duty hype, and we play Modern Warfare 2, and it just became a daily thing to play video games. So when we were at that school, we'd moved house a couple of times. You know, we'd move places, and I, you know, I, I, I met some cool people. I never met somebody for a serious relationship, um, and at this time, I didn't know the girlfriend I'm with at the moment. You know, I didn't know anything like that. And it was a really, really good fun time. At the school, we got to go on trips. The school had their own, like, sailboat. Uh, we used to, we'd go on that, you know, we'd, we'd go abroad. So I'd be able to really mingle with my friends a lot. I remember we did, like, um, dirt biking and stuff at school uh, for a term. Just, you know, like, just different activities. Shooting, I don't know what that is. That's going to be a bike. There we go. That's, that's a bike. Um, you know, shooting and all that kind of stuff. It was a very country school, and it was really, really cool. But this never, like, even though all these opportunities they gave, uh, different activities to get into, whether you wanted to get into sailing and stuff, I never stuck, uh, took away from my gaming, and my gaming was always a, a main part of, of my, of my life. And also at this time, uh, my brother was at the old school. My parents were, we'd moved house a load of times, and we were just, you know, just moving along very nicely, ticking along with no real issues. So. This came then to my... Where are we at now? We're at, we're at GCSEs. So GCSEs. If you don't know what GCSEs are, if you're American or something, these are the end of secondary school. These are like your big exams. If you want to get into the next school, you've got to do your GCSEs. Um, <clears throat> and I remember... Uh, I remember my GCSEs. Yeah, I remember my GCSEs very well. I, I didn't get below a B. So you can either get... You can get like an A star. Uh, you can get an A, a B. And they're like... You know, that's marked as like good. And you got C, which is, I believe, average, and then you have like D, E, F, etc., and F is fail. Uh, I got like two Bs, I got about four A's, and I got about three A stars, or something like that. So I did really well in my results, which gave me the opportunity to go to lots of different places. But at this time, uh, so I was about probably 17, uh, maybe 16. Uh, but at this time, you know, everyone was like, "Oh, what? Do you, what is next? You know, what is coming up next? Are you going to go in sick form? Are you going to college?" What do you want to do? Now, I really did not want to go to college. I did not want to go to sick form. Um, I had actually started up my own internet business. Let me get this going. So I started up my own internet business selling watch and cool it and loads of random stuff on the internet. And, you know, that was that was making that was making a little bit of bank. I was actually pretty happy with that. Um, and it was, for my age, it was very, very nice. And it was a nice little ticking over thing. And I was like, you know what? I said, to, I spoke to my parents. I said, you know what? I really want to go and uh, I want to do this. I don't want to go to sick form, etc., etc. And my parents were like, you know what? Give sick form a go. See what it's like. It was free because obviously the education is free. So give it a go and see what happens. So without really saying I want to, I went to a sick form called St. John's in Marlborough. Um, and it was awful. Absolutely hated it. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So as soon as after my GCSE finished, as soon as we were going into sick form, I went to an event which I've actually got back from the other day called EGX, uh, which also stands for Eurogamer Expo. Um, and this is a gaming convention in the UK, and it's a pretty exciting kind of thing. Now I went one year um, to sorry, actually no, I didn't go to that one. What am I talking about? I went to a thing, something called Game Fest. Uh, which was run by the people that own game and it was like, you know, you go you try out new games Etc, and it was really really cool and it, it fell made me fall back into love with gaming because after obviously my exams I just oh the exams were a pain in the ass. I wasn't able to play any games because I had to study um, So, you know, I thought you know what I'm gonna try and get back into gaming So I went to game fest um, with my friends and we really really enjoyed it 
it was it was you know it was really good fun because uh, I actually went with one friend I think I went with Adam and and it was really good fun because it was just. It was just video games. It was a big haul of video games. I don't know where a kid could go wrong there. Uh, and that made me fall back in love with video games. So I'm just putting that back into the story. Uh, but at this time, I was at St. John's, uh, which was fine, but very, very boring. I was taking media studies, biology, and geography. Uh, and in the first year, it was so, such a drag. I hated it. I was getting headaches every day. I was getting stressed because I was trying to do this... Uh, internet business thing at the same time and it was just oh it was such a pain so I kind of thought to myself F it <laughs> fit now you know uh, I kind of was like you know what I'm not even gonna bother doing school anymore I didn't quit uh, but I, in my head I turned school off school wasn't an important thing to me I, I got an attendance uh, for the year of 35% which I highly do not recommend doing my attendance was low I did not enjoy school etc etc so I didn't do it but from St. John's came a couple of awesome things. Of course, I met a few friends and I really fell in love with uh, football uh, even more. Not like American football with this stupid egg kind of ball. With proper football. Uh, with an actual football that you kick. Uh, you know, and I was going to the away games for Swindon Town FC. I was really supporting them. And it was very, very good, but it, would, it the problem with football and supporting football, if you're going into, you know, you're singing at the football games and you, that kind of thing, it can put you in the wrong crowd, and I really didn't want to sway uh, into that kind of crowd. So I lost my love for football after a couple of years of going because, you know, when you look back and you see people, like, you know, from one stand shouting to the other stand, say, you know, you want to fight? What are you, what are you bringing on? Like, blah, 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 blah. Um, I was like, you know what? That's so pathetic. Just because you're from a different place, they want to fight. I mean, I was just like, you know what, forget that. Uh, so, I haven't been to a football game in, in, in a while. I love watching football. When Match of the Day comes on, I watch it. When there's a football match, I watch it. But I just don't go anymore, which is a shame. But, from St. John's, I met something very important to me right now. Um, is a girl called Charlotte. Or, or Lottie, or Char, whatever you want to call her. Now, she came from the school across the road from me. Um, and that looked really ugly. I promise you, she did not look that ugly. Um, <laughs> I, and, you know, this is where I met Charlotte. And at the time, Charlotte actually had a boyfriend. So I was like, meh. That kind of sucks. Uh, but I know they were going through a hard time. I'm not going to go into all the juicy details. But basically, your boy of was like the absolute player, the pimp. Um, and, you know, he was just there. And he was just had to show what he had. Um, <clears throat> and basically, the girl was just like... There we go. That's exactly what the girl was like. She was like, um, oh, what's this? That's, that was meant to be in my legs. <laughs> she was just like, yeah, that's fine. And after a month, uh, I knew that she was breaking up with a boyfriend anyway. That was meant to be a heart. There we go. Um, and then I started meeting this girl called Charlotte. And luckily, she lived very close to me. She lived about 10 minutes away. Uh, and we obviously went to the same school. And I actually went to school just just to see her so you know I came into school uh, and I, I would pretend to study for exams uh, you know we were, we were like this is in a library don't worry we weren't about to like hug or anything that wasn't that serious yet uh, we were like in a library and you know I would come into school ju just just to chat to this girl and just to pretend I was working and um, you know and my, 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 my results not my results sorry my like attendance went up to like 60% so it doubled once I met this girl but then we went on summer holidays, and it kind of, it blossomed from there, I guess. So, uh, we kind of went on from that, and um, we put ourselves as a couple. So, we became a couple, and, you know, two years later now, which is which is now, we're two and a bit years later, we're, we're still a couple, and I couldn't be happier, and we're very happy. Well, at least I think we're happy. Jesus, I hope she doesn't do a draw my life, and she's like, nah, I don't like this guy. My hair looks wacky there. Uh, you know, we were very happy, and etc, etc. So, that changed my life, going to St. John's, obviously, because I met her. And that was the one thing. Like, when I think of St. John's, and when I think of sick form, the one thing I think, what did I get out of it? And, uh, it was love. La, da, da. Anyway, enough about that. Off the soppy stuff. Um, results-wise, I got, like, a, a B, a C, and a D. I really didn't try. It was a lot of rubbish. But then, the really big bit of my life, which is currently now, uh, changed. I went to Eurogamer 2013 with a friend called Adam again and Adam watched this this site. I, I don't even know what this site was called. It was called Uport. I mean YouTube. 
there we go. YouTube. Um, and I was like, right, okay. I, I'd, I'd gone onto a YouTube, sure, I'd watch like a tutorial, but I never watched it for an entertainment purpose. And uh, when we were there, there was this kid. There was this kid. And he was, you know, he was having photos with people, and I was like, uh, that, that that's a that's a selfie by the way, uh, and he was having a selfie with people. I was like, who is that kid? And I said to my mate, and, and literally when he saw who it was, this is his face. There, that's like, <gasps> and it was some randomer to me called Syndicate, and I was like, right, what what is a Syndicate? Who is Syndicate? And um, he said he was this famous YouTuber. He had like five million subscribers or four million. I don't know, a lot of subscribers. I was like, oh, that's cool. What does he do? And he's like, oh, he plays video games and put and uploads them online. I was like, what? What do you mean he does that? And uh, so after that day, I went back home and I searched this site. I searched YouTube, uh, and on YouTube, I found a plethora of awesome content. I watched it, you know, I laughed my socks off at, you know, some gamers and something was really helpful. And I was like, you know what, I really want to start doing this. So, even though I wasn't shy, but I didn't want anybody to know, I started up a small YouTube channel uh, called The Master Of. So, where did I get this name from? First of all, my gamer tag was um, just, just, just Master Of. Um, and Of came from, my first name is Oliver, second name is Vincent. So, there we go. Of. Simple as that. Um, and Master was, you know when you you start up an Xbox Live account, they give you a random name? Mine was like, Master Toast Liquor 364 So I was like, I'll just take the Master and I'll call myself Master Of. So I made this channel called Master Of. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to post some random gameplay. And I posted stuff without, uh, you know, with, without a microphone. So it had no microphone in it. And it was just gameplay. So I think I was playing at the time, like, Battlefield 3. Um... What else was I playing? What else? I'd, I'd been playing Call of Duty, and I've been doing stuff like that, and you know, it was it was going. I had like a hundred k, a hundred k, a hundred subs, and I was like, what? That is crazy. And that was like after a month, I had like a hundred subs, so that was really cool. And at that time, I told my friends, and I told Charlotte because I kept it under a wrap for about a month, and she was like, what are you doing? And my mates were like, oh really? You're actually starting that? You know, it's never gonna do anything for you. Um, not saying they were like not supportive, but everyone was like. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you doing this? So, I carried it on in in kind of in kind of the background. I carried on my YouTube channel, which was ticking over. All right, this was ticking over from September until February, and I think it was in February actually. And then when February came along, there was a new game that came out. At this time, I had about I had about 400 subs. I was rolling in those subs, baby, and uh, it was really really nice because I thought obviously that was a lot of subscribers, which it it, it was. Um, and this new game came out. This new game is called PVZ Garden Warfare. And I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I'd seen it uh, advertised at E3, and I was like, you know what? I really want to play it. And um, I thought, why not make that as the featured game on my channel? I don't know if many people are going to play it, so I was going to make that my featured game on my channel. Um, and I did, and within the first week, I went from 400 subs to 600 subs and I was like whoa okay there's serious potential in here and I made a video uh, that is still I think my most viewed video which is called 1 million coin spree uh, and basically you get coins in the game for playing well and I'd saved up a million and this was my big video at the moment this is on like I think it's on like 600,000 views which is crazy uh, but this video got me up to the amazing and massive 1,000 subscribers. And I was just blown away that this game had done that for me. You know, I was like, oh, wow, I'd made my first, like, $50. And I was like, damn, this, this is crazy. $50 a, a month just for having this and, you know, as a little bit of an extra. That's absolutely awesome. And then it changed again. So again, my friend Adam, who obviously is like set me into this whole YouTube thing by showing me what YouTube was, uh, he showed me this game called Cock. He made me play with his cock for hours on end. I loved playing with his cock, and it was great fun. His cock account was huge, um, and it was really good, but I didn't have the time to play Clash of Clans. That is Clash of Clans. 
I don't know what you guys were thinking, but that was Clash of Clans. And I really enjoyed playing Clash of Clans, but I didn't set up my own account. I can, I didn't have the time. And I was like, you know what? I want to do it on YouTube, uh, but I don't want to do that on YouTube because it's already uh, a game that I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, well, this new game comes out soon from the same people called Boom Beach. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, well, I'll start playing this game. At this time, I must have had... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I must have had, like, 10... 10k subs you know I, I was really happy at this stage 10,000 subs was massive uh, and I started a game called Boom Beach now I had also started talking to somebody that also had just started playing Boom Beach which was Teach Boom Beach or Nick uh, he was American so we'd kind of just start talking uh, and and for whatever I could remember he was always double my subs so he had like 20k at that point so I started playing Boom Beach, uh, he had been playing it for a while, so he helped me out on like, you know, what I should be doing, on what's what, and the channel grew to like a crazy, like 25k. We were on like 25,000 subs right now, and I was just, what is going on? At this stage, like Nick, Teach Boom Beach was on like 50k, so he was always double, but we always kept in close contact, uh, and we'd always helped each other out. I think we'd done a video by then together as well, which was pretty cool. And then I was like, you know what, everybody, in the comment section was just full of people saying play Clash of Clans like that literally just play Clash of Clans so I was like you know what I'll play Clash of Clans and I made my first video which I already remember it started off uh, with a mortar destroying all of my troops pew, pew, pew. that's a mortar here's my troops and it destroyed all of them um, and from that day on I loved playing Clash of Clans and you guys started viewing my videos and at this point I was playing Plants vs Zombies Clash of Clans and Boom Beach and you guys told me to um, to focus down on a game so I made a really rash decision at about 30k subs uh, to just make this a supercell channel and it got a bit of hate I'm not gonna lie it got a bit of hate to start off with and the, oh battery low and then uh, it went well and the channel literally the growth was like this like that all right that was that was that was the growth so about here Actually, it went like this. It went do do do, and then it went down, and then it went up. Because at this stage here, I announced the split of Plants vs Zombies: Garden Warfare to my second channel, and this was the people uh, that are obviously gone because of it and went to my other channel. And then these are the new people that found my Clash Clans channel. So I had been playing Clash Clans. Uh, the views, the videos were going up, and we hit something like 50k, 50,000 subs, which was unreal. And I was so so happy with that. Uh, and I figured that Clash Clans really is something that I want to focus down on uh, and play along with Boom Beach, obviously. Um, and yeah, so from that point on, my channel kind of just kept on growing, and it kept on growing. Uh, and I was getting like, like a thousand subs a day, and I was like, what? I hit a thousand subs a day, and it was immense. Um, and we eventually got up to 100k, which was when this video was meant to be made. And that to me was a milestone that I'd set myself, and I said, right, 100k equals a big YouTuber. That's what I think a big YouTuber is if they've got 100k, and I could not believe I hit it, um, and it was unreal. And then from that, we are now two weeks later, two weeks on, we are now on 150k. And I'm like, what? Two weeks later, 150k? And that is literally how my channel grew. So to this point, I still live in Wiltshire, I still live with my family, uh, we're still a big happy family, I still uh, have my girlfriend Charlotte who's at uni at the moment. Uh, obviously, there was some trouble when she went to uni, you know, it's like uh, not long distance, but you know, it was like a bit Oh, is it what's happening? But it seems to be absolutely perfect still and I wouldn't change it for the world And that is a very brief draw my life. I hope you guys have enjoyed it um, And I just want to say a massive thank you Wow, that's such bad writing. Thank you uh, for all the support you have changed my life. This is obviously now my job um, I couldn't be happier meeting you guys at Eurogamer and you know that kind of stuff is unreal And I just can't say anything else, but thank you. So hopefully we can continue this on uh, I hope you enjoyed the draw of my life. It was very highly requested It's very hard to remember my whole life just off off the top of my head But I hope you enjoyed it if you did please do smash the like button down below giving me a virtual high five Let's see if we can get this to a couple of thousand views and uh, and leave a comment about my life or whatever you want to leave a comment about but until next time guys thank you for watching thank you for the support i will see you super soon